Hello everyone, Mr. Walker here. In this lesson, I'm going to try and be kind of ambitious and talk about both balancing chemical reactions and five different kinds of reactions that you need to know about for this course. We'll see how it goes. I might decide to split it into two halfway through, but we'll see how it's going. So first of all, uh, balancing reactions or equations must uh, follow the law of conservation of energy. So what does that more or less mean? Well, we talked in general terms about chemical reactions. So whatever you have for the reactants, the mass of those combined reactants has to equal the mass of the products. That follows then the law of conservation of matter. And the reason why we balance a chemical reaction is to ensure that, in fact, this is the case. So what it's going to represent with the chemical equation is the rearrangement of atoms that we do have in the products versus the reactants and ensuring that we are meeting the laws of the conservation of matter. The way that we do this is by putting a number in front of each one of our reactants and products. There always needs to be a number. Sometimes that number is one, so we don't actually write it, but there can not, never be zero, otherwise that compound wouldn't be there as one of the reactants or the products. So where more than one molecule of a substance is involved in the reaction, yes, we do need to use the coefficient, and that's what we're going to be talking about with the balancing. So the rules, the steps for balancing. Uh, first of all, if you don't have a chemical formula correct, you cannot get the balancing correct. So always, always make sure that you have a correct formula, whether it is an ionic compound, whether it is a one of those molecular elements, for example, like oxygen is always O2 gas, not just O on its own. If you don't have that right, then you cannot have the balancing correct either. So check and double check, check to make sure that is the case. Remember, if it's an ionic compound, there can be no charge. The overall net charge has to be zero. If you tell me that there is a charge on one of your compounds, then something is wrong and you need to go back and take a look at that you have written the correct formula before you do the balancing. Balance the atoms on either side of the reaction arrow without changing the formula. You cannot change the formula as long as you have it correct. So a couple of tips when you're doing the balancing, as we will see. Begin with the atom that you have in the greatest number. Don't split up polyatomic ions. If you have oxygen, leave it until the very last. If you have hydrogen, leave it until second last. And we won't see a bunch of those until the very last examples when we talk about combustion reactions. So first of all, here we do have a chemical reaction. The reaction arrow would be right in here. So in this case, we have nitrogen dioxide, which is our molecular compound here. It is reacting with water and it's forming nitric acid, HNO3, and nitrogen monoxide as the gas. So in front of each one of these compounds that we have, both on the reactant side, remember this is the reactant side on the left-hand side of the reaction arrow, and these are the products that we do have, that we have a rearrangement of really the atoms that we have, the elements that we have on the left-hand side. So let's just double check here, make sure that we do have a chemical reaction. Left-hand side, we have nitrogen from the nitrogen dioxide, we have oxygen from both the nitrogen dioxide and the water, and we have hydrogen. We better have exactly the same thing on the other side or something is wrong right from the get-go. So yes, we have nitrogen again right here in our nitric acid. We have oxygen in both the nitric acid and the nitrogen dioxide gas, and we have hydrogen in our nitric acid. So that's looking good so far. Numbers in front are the coefficients. So this number right here in front of the nitrogen dioxide, that is a coefficient. The two in front of the nitric acid, that is a coefficient. There is also a coefficient in front of the water and the nitrogen monoxide. It is one, so we just don't write it in. And you need to realize that there is a number there. So what we really have is a ratio. This is what it says 
if we want to have the complete reaction between nitrogen dioxide and water, it is a three to one ratio. We have to have three nitrogen dioxide for every one water. When we get the products, it's a two to one ratio. We have two nitric acid that are formed for every one of the nitrogen monoxide gas molecules. So we can think of this in terms of molecules. We haven't talked about moles yet, but later on when we talk about moles, this is also going to apply to moles. <clears throat> it's probably not just going to be three molecules of nitrogen dioxide and one molecule of water. There will be many, many more, but this is what the coefficients tell us. These are the ratios that we're going to have in the reactants and in the products if we have a complete reaction that is taking place. So these coefficients ensure that we have exactly the same mass on either side. And what that comes down to is we have to have the same number of nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen on the left as the number that we have on the right. Let's just do a little bit of a tally here and make sure that that is the case. This is what I like to do. This is what I recommend you do. So for the nitrogen, this three in front applies to everything after that in the nitrogen dioxide. We don't have nitrogen in the water, so that means that we have three nitrogen. Oxygen, be careful, nitrogen dioxide already has two oxygen and then you put a three in front. So we need to multiply those together. Three times two equals six. So we have six oxygen in this balanced nitrogen dioxide, but we also have oxygen over here in the water. There's a one in front, so we have one more. So we have a total of seven oxygen on the reactant side. Hydrogen, nothing in the nitrogen dioxide. We have two in the water, so we have two. Conservation of mass says we have to have exactly the same on the right-hand side. Let's make sure that is the case. Nitrogen, we have a two in front of the nitric acid. So we have two there. Uh-oh, but we had three on the left-hand side. Oh, wait a minute. We also have nitrogen monoxide, so we get to count this one here as well. Okay, two plus one equals three. We have three nitrogen on the product side, three on the reactant side, that's good. That's what we want for the conservation of matter. Let's take a look at oxygen. Oxygen, we have two for a coefficient, but nitric acid has three oxygen. So here again, we need to do the two times three equals six. But we have one more over here, plus another one, equals seven, seven oxygen. That's what we had on the reactant side, we're good. Hydrogen, we have no hydrogen in the nitrogen monoxide, it's all in the nitric acid. Two in front says that we have two hydrogen, that's what we had on the left. This is a balanced chemical reaction. Without putting these coefficients in front, if we did this tally, it wouldn't be balanced. We wouldn't have the same number. So that's why we need to put those coefficients, those numbers in front, is to balance it. We can never change things in the formula. We can't decide that we're short one nitrogen, so we're just going to add an extra, make the nitrogen in nitric acid N2, because that is no longer nitric acid. The only thing you can do to balance these reactions is by sticking coefficients in front. So let's take a look at this one here. This is a kind of reaction that is called a formation reaction. Here we have aluminum metal <clears throat> solid reacting with oxygen gas. Remember, oxygen is not just O, it is O2. You need to get that right, otherwise you cannot possibly have the balancing right either. So if we do our telly, again, this is what I like to do, is just write down what we have on the left-hand side. We have aluminum and we have oxygen. Those are our different atoms. I draw a line on the product side. Again, you have to have the same thing, otherwise something is wrong. We have to have aluminum and we have to have oxygen. Now I just uh, count them up. 
How many do I have right now without putting a coefficient in front? There's no number after the aluminum, so we have one. Oxygen, there is a two after the oxygen, so we have two. Go to the other side, it may already be balanced. Well, in this case, it's not. So aluminum, we have two. There isn't a coefficient in front, but this two subscripted after the aluminum means that there are two. The three after the oxygen means that there are three. Clearly, this is not balanced because we have a different number of both aluminum and oxygen on either side of the reaction arrow. So I did say start with what you have the most of, but I also said leave oxygen until last. So that means I'm going to start with the aluminum. So how do I fix the aluminum? I cannot change anything in the formula. I can't just say I'm going to put a 2 here after the aluminum. You cannot do that. That doesn't exist. Aluminum, metal, is just Al. But what I can do is put numbers in front. So if I put a 2 in front of the aluminum, that applies to everything after it, which is only aluminum. So now, instead of 1, I have 2. In other words, I just balanced the aluminum. Now I go to the oxygen. When I go to the oxygen, I have three on the left. I have two. There isn't really a number that I can put in front of this to balance it. So what I might have to do is think of the lowest ratio, the lowest combination of these. If I multiply two by six, that is six. Is there something that I can do to give six oxygen on the left? Well, there is, of course. That's putting a three in front. Three times two means that there are now six. How do I get six oxygen on the right? Well, I multiply that oxygen by two. Two times three is six as well. So now I'm good for the oxygen. It's balanced. But it's not, because as soon as I put that 2 in front of the aluminum oxide, that changed the aluminum. Sometimes this is what you have to do, go back and forth and back and forth. We fix the aluminum, and then we fix the oxygen, but now the aluminum isn't balanced. So now I have 4 aluminum on the right. 2 times 2 is 4 aluminum, but I only have 2 on the left. But fortunately, all I need to do is change this to a 4. That makes this one 4. Always go back and double check. 4 aluminum on the left, 2 times 2, 4 aluminum on the right. That is good. Oxygen, 3 times 2, 6 oxygen on the left, 2 times 3, 6 oxygen on the right. This is now a balanced chemical reaction. You might be given the word equation, and then you need to write the formula for it. So let's do that for this one. Copper metal, whenever you're told metal, it is just straight up, whatever that symbol is, and it's going to be solid. So this is reacting with silver nitrate. Let me write the ions up here. So silver is a transition metal, metal but it's not multivalent. It is just Ag1+. Plus. Our nitrate, don't mix it up with nitrate. Nitrate, A-T-E, is NO3-1-. minus. NO3-1-. minus. This one is 1+. plus. They cancel out when we do the crisscrossing, so we end up with Ag. NO3. This will be dissolved in a solution more than likely, so it's probably AQ that we have for that. And what do we get? Well, we're told what we get. We get silver, that is our AG solid, and dissolved aqueous is copper 2. So this copper here is the Cu2 plus version. Nitrate, NO3. So here we need the brackets because that 2 is going to go on the outside of the brackets. Again, you have to have this right with writing your formula. Otherwise, you can't get the balancing correct. 
two on the outside, and we said that this was, we're told, that this is AQ. Okay, so now let's do some balance sheet. Draw a line. Reactants, what do we have? We have copper. We have silver. Polyatomic. You have polyatomic on the reactant side, and you have polyatomic on the product side. Don't split it up and write down nitrogen and oxygen. Write it as the entire polyatomic ion, and it will make life so much easier for you. What do we have on the product side? Exactly the same thing. Hopefully, we have copper, we have silver, and we again have our nitrate, NO3. Let's count them up. How many do we have of each? We have one copper, we have one silver, we have one nitrate. Right hand side, we have one copper, we have one silver, it's looking very easy, oh darn. This two applies to what we have in the brackets. We have two nitrates. So you can't say, I'm just gonna erase that. No changing what we have in the formula. Now we need to go to coefficients and we need to put the correct coefficient in front to balance it because unfortunately it's not balanced. The only thing out of balance is the nitrate. So the only thing we can do is fix it by putting a number in here or on the other side. Well, we already have two on the right-hand side. We need two on the left-hand side. So I put a two in front of the silver nitrate. Okay, that changes this one to a two and that's all good except now we have two silver on the reactant side and only one on the right hand side but if i just put a two in here then it balances it copper didn't change okay let's double check one copper on the left one copper on the right two silver on the left two silver on the right two nitrate on the left to nitrate on the right, this reaction is balanced. One more here. So here we have ammonia gas. This was one of those memorization ones, the ammonia. That is NH3, molecular compound, also a base. Reacts with oxygen. Again, you need to remember oxygen is diatomic. It is O2 gas. This is going to react and it's going to form water vapor. H2O vapor means a gas. Make sure we have the states right here and nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas is also, or sorry, nitrogen dioxide, not nitrogen gas. Nitrogen dioxide molecular compound NO2 and that one is a gas. What do we have on the left? Nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen on the right. Nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. How many do we have of each of these on the right and on the left? One nitrogen on the right, or sorry, on the left, our reactant side. Three hydrogen two oxygen. Okay, the three after the H only applies to that H. It doesn't apply to the nitrogen. There's a one here for the nitrogen. If there were brackets and the three was on the outside, it would apply to the nitrogen, but this three is only for the hydrogen. Two oxygen. Right-hand side, nitrogen, we just have the one. Hydrogen, we have the two. You need to be careful with the oxygen because we have one here and we have two over here. So we have three in total. So this reaction is not balanced. <clears throat> what are we gonna do? We're gonna put some coefficients in front to balance it. What are we gonna start with? Well, we're gonna leave oxygen until last. We're gonna leave hydrogen until last, second last, which means we're starting with nitrogen, which is balanced. So let's go on to our hydrogen. <clears throat> Lowest common denominator of three and two is six. So that means I'm going to try and get six hydrogen on either side. How do I get six on the left hand side? By putting a two in front. Two times three means I now have six. I have two on the right. I want six. I'm going to put a three in front. Three 
times 2 is 6. Putting that 2 in front of the ammonia didn't change the oxygen. Putting the 3 in front of the water did change the oxygen on the right-hand side. So now on the right, we have 3 plus another 2. We have 5 oxygen, oops, plus 2 equals 5 oxygen in total. 5. <clears throat> we can use fractions. We will get fractions when we talk about combustion reactions, but there's not a whole number that we can put in front of here to give us 5. So how are we going to fix this? Well, one thing you can do for starters is just try doubling everything. So I'm going to change this to a 4. I'm going to change this to a 6. I'm going to change this to a 2. And I'm going to see what number I can now put in front of the oxygen. That kind of messes up a lot. So now we have 4 nitrogen on the left. And we have our, I'm going to change this one as well, because obviously that's not going to balance it for us. Let's put a four in front of here as well. So now we have four of the nitrogen. Again, a lot of the time it is going back and forth. If I go on to my hydrogen now, I have four times 3, 12, hydrogen, 6 times 2, that's 12, so that's all fine. Oxygen, that's our problem, oxygen on the left. Now I have 6 in the water, and I have 4 times 2, 8, equals 14 oxygen on the product side. So now there is a number that I can put, a whole number that I can put in front of the oxygen, and that is a 7. 7 times 2 is 14, and that's now the same number as what I have on the right-hand side. Let's double-check everything, make sure we're okay. 4 nitrogen, 4 nitrogen with the coefficient in front. 4 times 3, 12 hydrogen, 6 times 2, 12 hydrogen. That's good. Oxygen, 7 times 2, 14 on the left. 6 from water, 4 times 2, another 8, 14. I now have this reaction that is balanced as well. I decided that if I continue on, this is going to be a very long lesson, so why don't I stop it there for now, just uh, leaving this one with the balancing, and then I'll leave the reaction types for another lesson.